guys, this is Mr. Winters. In this video, I'm gonna take you through how to build our first main project. And that's one of these washer games or shelves, depending on which one you wanna use it for. First of all, I designed this project to be a game you could play, kind of like cornhole. If you get yourself some washers like this, or even like 50 cent pieces, when you play the game, you lay this like this. And then when you shoot, if you make it into this piece, that's one point. If you make it into this piece, it's two points. And if you make it into this piece, it's three points. So we'll see if I can make a shot here. There we go, there's a two point. So that was the original design of this project, was to be a game called Washers. Now, you might not want to play the game as Washers, and a lot of people will just hang this up on their wall as a shelf. And you can put different things up on it and use it as a decoration like that. Another option is you could just lay it beside your bed and you could keep things like your cell phone in there or you know a little your keys or whatever stuff that you have that you like to keep beside your bed. And that'll help keep your stuff organized like that. So it's kind of a project that can do a lot of things. And what we're gonna really learn in this project is how to do what's called a butt joint. And that's the most simple joint in woodworking. And that's when you just put two pieces of wood together, end to end, like that. So that's called a butt joint. On the inside, we're going to learn how to do a butt joint with nails and glue. And then on the outside, we're going to learn how to do a butt joint with glue and then screws. So lots of different things to learn in this project. I'm going to take you through it step by step. Okay. The first thing we're gonna do to start making this project is create these pieces right here. So it just makes a T. So we need to cut four inch pieces, and then this is three and one fourth. So I have four boards I need to cut. Four inches, four inches, three and one fourth, three and one fourth. We're gonna use the miter saw to cut these pieces. First, I'm gonna cut the two four inch pieces of wood. So I'm gonna get my combination square and I'm gonna set it to four inches. Then use your combination square to make your mark. We're gonna cut on that side of the line. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that step and cut another four inch board. Okay, now I'm gonna cut two three and one fourth inch. So I'm gonna change my combination square down to three and one fourth of an inch. Now repeat those steps and cut two three and one fourth inch boards. Okay, I got two three and one fourth inch boards, and I've got two four inch boards. Okay, the next step is we wanna do a layout on our four inch board and mark where we're gonna drill holes. We're gonna be attaching the four inch board to the three and one fourth inch board to make those little T's on the inside of the project. So first I have to know half of four. So that's two. So I'm gonna set my combination square to two inches. Okay, I'm taking my four inch board and I'm using my combination square to make a mark and I make a line right down the center of that board. Do that to both of your four inch boards. Now, I need to set my combination square to half an inch. And I'm gonna mark one down this way. And I'm gonna flip it over and do that again from this way. Okay, that's where I'm gonna drill my holes. 
Repeat that to your other four inch board. Okay, so that tells us where we're gonna go to the drill press now and drill our holes. Okay, the next step is to use the drill press and a 1 16th inch bit to drill, pre-drill a hole to make it easy to put the nails in and, and join these two boards together. Do not assume that there's a 1 16th bit in the drill already. You may have to change it. So I'm gonna need to change this bit out. I'm gonna use the chuck key and I'm gonna put in the 1 16th inch bit. Take that key out so the machine won't turn on. Okay, we're all set, Put your safety glass is on. I'm gonna drill right where that cross is for a total of four holes. I'm gonna get our first butt joint put together. So we're gonna be putting the three and one fourth inch piece of wood as the bottom of the T and the four inch piece as the top. And we made that line to help us line this up right in the middle. Take your combination square and continue that line down the edge of each side. And that'll make you easier to line this thing up right in the middle. So all I'm doing is just extending that line down the edge of the board. Now we're going to take our three and one fourth inch board and we're going to clamp it into one of the vices. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of glue on the top here. Don't use too much glue. And then use your finger to spread that glue out. Okay, now I'm going to take the four inch piece of wood and I'm going to do my best to keep it right in the middle of that board. You can see how my line is right in the middle of that board. We're going to take a finish nail. This is a one and one fourth inch finish nail and our claw hammer. And we're going to nail that in. Now, after you do one side, Make sure that your line didn't move and the board didn't change on you. So I gotta realign this a little bit to where it stays right in the middle. Now if you have any extra glue, wipe that off. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a nail set. And this we use to hammer these nails down into the board just a little bit more, enough that we can put putty over that and cover it up so that you don't see the nails. The idea here is that we're gonna hide the nails and you won't see them. So you take your nail set, it goes right over top of the nail, and you're just gonna hit it you know, one or two times. Your goal, your goal is to put the nail a sixteenth of an inch down into the wood. Okay, there you go, there's the first T. There's the nails and you can see that they're set down into the wood. Okay, now I'm gonna repeat all of that with the other two pieces of wood. Look for glue like that and wipe it off while it's still wet.
Okay, now we're just gonna let these dry and go to the next step. Next step is we need to fill these holes in where the nails are set with a glue and sand sawdust mixture. And then after that is done, we're gonna sand these two pieces, just the tops. What that becomes is the inside of this, and that's really hard to get in there and sand if we wait until the end of the project. So we're gonna fill those holes first and then sand it right now so that that's done and out of the way. So you wanna find really fine sawdust like that. Your best place to find it is over at the sanding area. You're gonna take a little bit of glue and mix that in with the sawdust. Got about a minute to dry, and then we're gonna sand the top of that tee with a power sander. Okay, now we need to sand off the sawdust and the pencil lines. I'm gonna use the palm sander with 120 grit sandpaper to sand that off. So we have this part of the project ready to go on each side. So the next step is to get these two boards. Okay, these two boards are five and a half inches long. All right, I'm gonna set my combination square to five and a half inches. Okay, I got two boards, five and a half inches long. So next thing we need to do, we need to make a layout on the end of this piece of wood to mark where we're gonna have our nails to attach to the project. So you can see on the example, we're gonna have two nails that are gonna be going straight into this board. So we need to lay this out so that we get it in the right spot. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my combination square to three eighths of an inch. So it helps if you use the eighths. We're going to three eighths. Then I'm gonna come down like this to make my mark. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna repeat that to this board. In my combination square, and I just need a long edge here to make a straight line. Okay, so both of these pieces are three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. The reason we made that three eighths is because the thickness of our board is three fourths of an inch. Half of three fourths is three eighths. So when I put these boards like this, you can see how that line will put us right in the middle of the other board. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to come down one half of an inch and a half an inch to finish making, where I, making the marks where I need to drill these holes. So now I'm gonna set my combination square to half an inch. So now we're at four eighths or eight sixteenths. And I'm gonna go this way and make the crosses. I'm gonna repeat that to this board. So I have a 1 16th inch drill bit in there 
and I'm gonna drill all four or uh, four holes here, four holes here for a total of eight holes, and I'm drilling the whole way through. Make sure you have your safety glasses on when you're drilling on the drill press. assemble all of that together to make this entire inside piece. What you need to remember is this piece needs to be facing out. This is the top of my T right here and that piece is running this way. So you just got to make sure that you're putting this board on the right way. A little bit of glue, run it right here. Use your finger to spread that glue glue out. We use a one and one fourth inch finish nail to attach these. So now you're just being careful to line up everything as carefully as you can and keep everything as straight and even as you can. Then once you have it, put your nail in. After you do one nail, make sure you haven't moved it because it will move all the way over like that. Make sure you check that it's straight again. I'm going to flip it over and put the other piece on there. Once you do one nail, check and make sure that it hasn't moved. I need to put this piece in like that. Now, I'm not going to need the vise anymore for this. I can do it right here on the table. So I'm going to take glue and I'm going to put it on both pieces of the top of the tee. So I'm going to glue here and here the same time. Okay, I'm gonna do this one first. Keep everything as straight and lined up as you can. Just always be checking that it's staying straight. I'm going to flip it over and get this last side. Make sure you keep it straight. You might have to move these and then use your hand as a clamp so they stay straight. Okay, you're going to get a lot of glue squeezing out from where you made those joints in the corners in here and on the outside. So while it's all still wet, get a wet rag and wipe all of that glue off. Okay. Once you have all the glue wiped off the best that you can, we're now gonna use a nail setter again and we have eight nails that we need to set down into the board. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now those nails are about one sixteenth of an inch down into the wood. I need to make another glue and putty mixture and fill all eight of these holes. And you can't get a power sander in here to sand stuff when we put it all together. So we want to have this entire inside already sanded and done. Okay, everything's glued and puttied up. Now I'm going to use 
120 grit sandpaper, and I'm gonna sand everything that I can sand. Get a wet rag and wipe this whole thing down. Got it all wet with the rag. I'm gonna let this dry, let those wood fibers raise up. And when it's dry, I'm gonna come in with 220 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna sand this thing. And then this piece of the project will be complete and done. My project is completely dry. So now I'm gonna come in with 220 grit sandpaper and get the finished sanding on this one. Okay, I just finished with the 220 grit paper. So now when you feel this thing, it should feel as smooth as a piece of glass would feel. And we are done with this piece. Okay. The next step of this project is to start creating the outside square. 12 inches or one foot, 12 inches or one foot. So I need to go cut two 12 inch boards. I'm gonna go use the miter saw to do that. I'm gonna use a tape measure and I'm gonna make my measurement that way. Okay, repeat that for your second board. The next thing I need to do here is figure out how long this board needs to be. So you're gonna take your middle part and you're gonna take these two pieces and put it all together like that and we need to measure the exact distance of this whole line. Everybody's number is gonna be a little different here based on how you did on your cutting. So put it together like that, keep it tight together, and make sure you measure to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. So mine is 13 and 5 eighths. I'm gonna go cut two boards to 13 and 5 eighths of an inch. That measurement might be different for you, so make sure you checked it. If you need help with that, just let me know. Okay, now I got two boards that are 13 and 5 eighths of an inch. Next step now, we're gonna take our inside piece and we're gonna attach this board to it. So we need to make a layout right here so that we get straight into the middle of this board. So this board was 12 inches long. So we're gonna go half of that, which is six inches. I'm gonna set my combination square to six inches. And I'm taking my 12 inch boards and making that mark halfway to six inches. Okay, now I need to set my combination square to a half an inch so I can make the marks of where I'm gonna drill my holes. So set it half an inch. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to the drill press. So I'm still using a 1 16th inch drill bit. I'm gonna drill these two holes and then these two holes. Now 
take your combination square and extend that line down the edge on each side. That's gonna help us line everything up right in the middle. Clamp this into our press with that piece facing up. And run a bead of glue right here. Okay, make sure your line is right in the middle of this board. So follow that line down right into the middle of that board. Okay, now make sure it's straight on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna flip this thing over and repeat. That's like one of those Star Wars things. While your glue is wet in there, make sure you wipe it off. Got the wet glue wiped off. Now I'm gonna use the nail setter to set those nails down into the wood. Next step is to attach these longer boards. And we're gonna do this one a little differently. We're gonna use screws as our joiner and still do a butt joint, only we're gonna use glue and screws this time. And I'm gonna show you how you can countersink your screw so that it'll be down into the wood. Before we can drill, we need to do a layout on each of these boards so we know where to drill the holes so that they'll go right into the middle of this board. We're gonna start by setting our combination square to 3 eighths of an inch. We need 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna go in this direction, 3 eighths of an inch. Now I need to set my combination square to half an inch. And I'm gonna go in this way and then this way. And that'll tell me where to drill my holes. So now we have eight holes that we need to drill. Okay, now this time we need to do this in two steps. First, we're gonna drill a hole with a 1 8 inch drill bit. After we do that, we're gonna drill what's called a countersink hole with this bit. This is called a Forstner bit, and it's a 1 4 inch Forstner bit. When you do this, you're gonna drill down into the wood until you get to the top of that, and that's where you're gonna stop the 1 8 inch drill bit. Okay, I got the drill set up with the 1 8 inch bit. Now I'm gonna drill all eight holes and I'm going the whole way through the board with this one. Okay, I got the 1 4 inch Forstner bit in there. So now I'm gonna drill halfway down, and I did one of these already to show you what I mean. I'm gonna drill into that board until the bit is level, and that's where I'm gonna stop. So we're not drilling the entire way through, 
We're just drilling until you're at the top of that bit. And I'm going to repeat that for my second board. So we drilled an eighth inch hole first, and then we used the one fourth inch Forstner bit to make the countersink hole. So if you need help with that, just let me know. I could help you do like two of them to show you how that's done if that was a little bit confusing or it was hard to see in the video. So now we're going to take this piece. The next step is to take this piece. And we're gonna attach these. All right, start by clamping this in the vise. And we're just gonna worry about one piece at a time. We wanna make sure we get this piece perfectly straight. And then once that all is all attached and screwed together, we will be able to move this and make it be straight. Okay, run a bead of glue right here. Line up your board. Okay, this time we're going to use a one and one fourth inch wood screw, and you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Now you want to tighten that screw until you see the glue squeeze out of the joint. Okay, don't over tighten those. Because if you just crank as hard as you can, you're going to split your wood. So you just tighten until you see the glue squeeze out. Then wipe that glue off. Now I'm going to repeat over here. It's going to be a little tricky to get glue in there, but you can get it in there. And you might have a partner help you, and then you can hold it straight like that. Okay, now I'm going to flip this over and repeat the steps. Okay, just a reminder, only screw until you get the, the glue squeezing out. Don't over screw or you could crack your board. Now this last piece is hard to get the glue spread around, just, but you can do it. You just gotta get your finger in there or you might use like a pencil. Just spread that out around the best you can. Okay, there we go. All right guys, the next step in this project is we need to make a little putty to fill these two nail holes on this side and then these two nail holes on this side. Find that really fine sawdust. There's usually a bunch of it laying back here. Okay, we're not gonna fill the holes where the screws are. We're gonna leave those that way. Okay, next step, it's time to sand our whole project. So we're gonna start with 120 grit sandpaper and sand the whole thing down. All right, I'm gonna start by sanding all of the edges on this top and I'm gonna flip it over and do all the edges on that side. And then I'll do all of the faces this way.
faces on the inside here, you're gonna need to use hand, use your hand with sandpaper to do in here. Okay, the next step after you've sanded with 120 grit sandpaper is to get a wet rag and we're gonna wipe this entire thing down. All right, this thing's all wiped down, so now I'm just gonna let this dry, and once it's dry, I'll come back with the sander and 220 grit sandpaper. Okay, this thing's all dried up, so now I'm gonna sand this with 220 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna follow the same pattern. I'm gonna do the edges here, flip it over, do the edges, and then I'll hit all the faces, and I'll have to use some my hand to do the inside here. Okay, now I suggest you use the air compressor and you're going to just blow this thing, all the sawdust off. Should be as smooth as glass now. Okay, this next step is optional. So if you want to burn this thing and, and give it the burn look, you can do that. If you don't want to do that and you just want to go right to the finishing step, you can skip this part and go to the finishing step. For this video, I'm going to show you how to torch this thing to give it that burn look, which personally I think looks really, really cool. Get one of these metal cart, these little metal stands. I got two of them in the room so that we're not burning our tabletops. And then we've got our propane, our propane torch, and you need a striker. Now the key to burning wood is that you don't over burn it. We're not torching this thing to where it's black or it's truly just looks like you threw it in the fire. You're just gonna barely burn this and it really shouldn't take you very long. Now you want to have that nice little triangle like that. You don't want to have it full blast. And you don't want it down like that. So you kind of want just kind of that medium looking triangle right there. That's what you're looking for because when you put that mineral oil on it, it really brightens everything up and makes it look really, really nice. So don't over torch your project.
right on this knob, there's a off switch to make sure you're turning it right way. Make sure you turn the thing completely off. Remember, that's gonna be hot. Now just make sure you got all the parts. There's pieces that are kind of easy to miss. So just make sure you've got all your pieces done. Okay, the last step for our project is to put our finish on and we're gonna use mineral oil to cover the entire project and that will really brighten it up and put a nice coat on this. Now when I do this, I'm gonna follow the same steps that I did sanding. So I'm gonna do this edge then I'm gonna do this edge, then I'm gonna do all the faces, and then I'm gonna get all of these insides. Now, these are the hardest spots to get. So when you do these, you need to take the corner of that sponge and get up into that corner so that you're hitting everything. There shouldn't be any spots on here that are bare wood. When you do this, get yourself a rag to lay down on the table and then I have a container of mineral oil, and this is called a staining sponge. Where these holes are, where there are screws, take the sponge and squeeze that oil down into there. Okay, now I'm gonna start getting these hard to reach corners on the inside. And to do that, you've gotta push that rag down into the corner and squeeze that oil into that. It's okay if it's messy, you're gonna come back and wipe all that clean. But that's how you'll get those cracks covered good. Okay, once you have everything good, I'm gonna give it one more just wipe down for the whole thing, and I'm just gonna double check and make sure I've got every spot on the project as I'm just wiping all the extra oil off. All right guys, I got my project complete, and it's looking sweet. Have fun in the shop, make cool things, be safe. We'll see you on the next video.